Hello, this is Carol Martin. I decided that today was the day to welcome you back to my studio and to introduce myself to you. I've had a plan to do this when my subscribers reached 300 and 400 and 500 and now they've reached 600 and I still didn't do it because, well, I don't know. I was just, I guess I was just scared. That works for me. But sometimes in life you just wake up and say, I'm going to do it. And then I was dusting and cleaning glass in my living room and I said, no, I'm going to do it now, today. So here I am introducing myself to you. As many of you might know, I'm a retired teacher. And for my 70th birthday bucket list, I decided to pursue the one thing that I really, really have wanted to do when I retired, and that is do mixed media art. So I began. And last year, my New Year's resolution was to try YouTube. Well, 145 uh, videos later and 600 wonderful, wonderful subscribers later, I've decided that it was time that we got to look at each other and chat. But I also am thinking that the thing that I had done with such love for 40 years of my life, stitchery, was not something that I just should have dropped when I started mixed media. But it kind of didn't work together because one was all-encompassing and I soon found out that mixed media art was all-encompassing. So I've been thinking about the last six months that I could probably combine art, mixed media, and stitchery and share it with you. So, before I begin, I want to dispel any ideas that you might have about the kind of stitchery, also called needlepoint or needlework, that, oh, I can't do it, it's too hard, it's too difficult. No, please, it is not. We'll find that out as we go along. However, I want to show you some examples of stitchery that I've done, oh, maybe in the last eight years or so. This first piece that I've done was my first original piece of needlepoint. This is, as you can see, is pale blue canvas and it started out with absolutely nothing on it. So, I just used a needle and thread as though I were using a pencil, a black marker, or a paintbrush. And you look at this and say, oh, no, no, can't do this, impossible. Doing these bits were just straight, long pieces, and the brown branches of this, the larger branch, are all done in the same DMC embroidery cotton that we can find in Michael's and Joanne's. So, this is the kind of thing that I'm thinking might be fun to do and to apply to our needlework. Here is an example of gold work. Never minding this, this is real gold, the top of the mountain in uh, needlework. I love this class. I love learning how to do it. But what I want to show you is this background. This is simply dark royal blue DMC cotton applied 
following a design. And if you can count, you can do this. I know you're saying the woman maybe should have stayed off vlogging because she's crazy, but it's not so. It can be done. It is easy to do. Well, it becomes easy to do when you understand some basic concepts of needlework. Here again, a piece of dimensional work, and you know mixed media artists are all about dimension. And these are floss wrapped around a broken toothpick. And this is a background design that if it got any simpler to do, it would be something that you could probably, I know that I taught fifth grade, I know that you could teach fifth graders to do this. It's so, so very doable. I'm not saying that we're going to even want to get to this level, but I'm talking about this background work right here. And finally, I thought I'd share this piece with you only because of these leaves. All of us can draw these leaves on our watercolor paper or our mixed media paper or our canvas. In our case, it will be on a canvas or something else that I'm going to show you that I'm really tickled to try. This is just what's called satin stitching and it's just wrapping around a number of threads and when you see how really doable this is you'll I hope want to give it a try so this is what I'm going to try working on this is, as you can see, it's by a very reputable company, perforated paper. 14 count for needlework. Do you notice they've also jumped on the bandwagon and called it for scrapbooking and more? Well, we're going to do and more because this is paper. And I know that we can figure out how to paint our designs and do some painted backgrounds. And then because of the perforation, we can do some lovely stitches on top of it to add dimensionality. And once, let's say we did one of the leaves that we see in this piece. I'm just getting used to the camera, folks. Please be patient. There it is. Nope, there it is. Okay. When you use perforated paper, you can just cut close around the outline edge of your leaf design after it is stitched. You have it in your hand and you attach it with glue to your piece of mixed media work. We will be, or I will be referring to this book, which is my Bible, has been since it was first published in 1977. This is the second printing, updated version, and an example of the stitchery directions in this book. Now, there again, I will show you how very, very simple it is to do this, because as you'll notice, there are small numbers up here on this waffle pattern. There are small numbers in the corner, and if you'll notice, one is down in the lower left and two is in the upper right. And you pull your needle, your thread through at one and down at two. And then you find three, which is in the lower right corner, and come up at three and down at four, and around you go. And you end up with a lovely waffle. So, I do hope that you will be looking forward to starting this adventure. And the first thing we're going to do is what I'm going to, I haven't done it myself, so I'm going to share the trip with you and I'm going to try some painting. I'll try it with you and you'll decide whether or not you might be interested in this. 
And I do hope that you will be because it would be a nice, new, fresh, fun thing to do. The materials required are a package of some needles, a needle threader, some DMC cotton floss, even some metallic threads that might add a little pizzazz, but we're going to start slow and easy and see what we can do to add just an extra little touch to our mixed media art. Well, I'm now going to have my moment of reality check because I'm going to get to run this back and see how my first vlog came out and if it is even remotely workable I'm going to throw myself at your mercy and share. I hope that if you do like it you'll give me a thumbs up. I would so appreciate a comment from you on this because remember I said I would do this at 200 subscribers and now I'm up to 600 and I just finally did this. And let me know if you think it might be fun to try stitchery in mixed media art. If you would like to share with some friends, I would appreciate that. And certainly, I would love it if you would subscribe. Bye now.